Hello everyone. We hope that you will enjoy this presentation from the Occupational Therapy Team about taking care of your health and home. Our role as an occupational therapist is to try and support people with a life-limiting condition so they can continue doing the activities that they want or need to do. If you would like a little more information about our role and how occupational therapy can help you, please see our other video called Occupational Therapy and You, which you can find on a link below this video. We're here today to talk about the importance of taking care of your health and home and what that means for your overall health and well-being. We will focus on domestic activities such as grocery shopping, meal preparation, household tasks and medication management and discuss how to make these activities a little easier. We will talk about how to use your body more efficiently and how to plan activities across your day or week to maximise your energy levels. We will also have a quick look at environmental factors that may help or hinder different domestic activities and what equipment, aids or adaptations may help to make things a little easier. But first, let's take a moment to pause and think about your daily routine and what activities you might consider as taking care of your health and home. You may wish to pause this video and jot down a few notes about what is most important and meaningful to you. Here are just a few examples of some daily activities that many of us engage in each day to look after our health and home. These activities are all essential pillars to our physical health and psychological well-being. Over the course of many years, we will each develop our own unique routine and preferences when it comes to looking after ourselves and our home environment. Some of us may enjoy activities like cooking and cleaning and use this as a meaningful way to spend our time. Whereas for other people, they may see food as fuel and cleaning as a chore. It really doesn't matter which of these you may fall into, as long as you feel happy and confident in managing your everyday living. As we get older or experience illness, it can become a little harder to complete personal activities of daily living due to changes in mobility, balance or dexterity. Other symptoms relating to illness such as pain, fatigue and breathlessness can also restrict how easy it is to complete these activities. Some people find that certain daily activities use up a lot of energy, so they quickly feel fatigued or the physical demand can increase pain and breathlessness. This is very common, especially when completing high energy activities such as hoovering, gardening or going shopping. Two of the key messages in making activities of daily living a little easier is to one, conserve your energy and two, reduce the physical demand on your body. It is quite common to fluctuate between good days and not so good days, so it can be quite hard to manage your energy levels at times. It's always a good idea to try and plan your day or week ahead so you can use your energy resources most efficiently each day. Positive coping strategies or equipment can help reduce the amount of energy that you use. For example, sitting down whilst chopping vegetables or using a lightweight cordless vacuum cleaner. Some people find that they have more energy later on in the day, so they may choose to complete high energy activities later in the afternoon. It can also be helpful to imagine your energy resources as a phone battery, a jug of water or pocket money and to count every activity or task that you do as something that uses up these energy resources. For example, if you had £10 worth of energy each day, then cooking a full meal and cleaning up every evening may use up £5 worth of this energy every day, whereas a healthy microwave meal may use up just £2 in comparison. Using equipment such as a kitchen trolley may save you a further £1 worth of energy across the day, so you have more energy to spend the rest of the day. Make sure to include periods of rest so you can keep your energy resources topped up. 
Without any rest, you may start the next day with just eight pounds worth of energy before you've even got out of bed. Here, we will give you a quick overview of three positive coping strategies for managing your energy levels and fatigue when attending to activities of daily living. These strategies are plan, prioritize and pace. It can be helpful to note down how you feel across different times of the day or week. Do you have any fatigue, pain or breathlessness? Are there any patterns where you see good days followed by not so good days? Can you think of ways to reduce some of the demand on your time and energy? What about planning your meals for the week ahead or doing your grocery shopping online? Perhaps online shopping can be something that your relatives can help with from a distance when they don't live locally. It can also help to gather items together so they are easy to reach and saves you having to walk back and forth multiple times. You could use equipment such as a kitchen trolley, a four-wheeled walker storage compartment or walking frame caddy to help. You could also ask someone to help gather items together before you need them so you have everything you need at hand and ready for you to finish the task independently. For example, keeping ingredients close by or left on the worktop for preparing a meal. Prioritise your time and energy depending upon what is most important to you. Balance activities that you need to do with more pleasurable things that you would like to do. Sometimes people prefer to pay someone to help with their cleaning or gardening. Other people may have friends or family who may be willing to help. Receiving help for these bigger and more demanding tasks can free up more energy for you to participate in other activities that are meaningful to you, such as your hobbies or spending quality time with loved ones. If you would like more information about how to find a cleaner or a gardener, or to find out what financial assistance may be available to you, please speak to the social work team here at St Catherine's Hospice or within your local authority. It's also important that you give yourself permission to say not today and be kind to yourself. Your body is adapting to a lot of change and it's vital that you don't try to overstretch yourself as this could cause more harm than good. It's perfectly okay to have a restful day where you maybe don't stick to your usual routine or do any heavy cleaning as you might have planned. Pace refers to pacing, which is a self-help technique that aims to balance energy use with periods of rest. It can also be helpful to spread out your activities across the day or week. If you do your own housework and gardening, try to spread these out over a few different days and make sure to schedule some rest in between. Sometimes it can be tempting to do a lot on the days that you feel well, but we would always encourage you to save your energy wherever possible so you don't have an energy crash or increased pain from doing too much in one go. Try and leave 20% of your energy reserved at all times. If you would like further information about managing your energy levels and fatigue, please see our dedicated video, Taking Care of Your Energy, which covers plan, prioritise and pace in much more detail, alongside some useful hints and tips about maintaining your wellness. Sometimes a person's home environment can make it a little harder to safely move around the home and complete activities of daily living. Do any of these factors affect you? Steps and stairs, either inside or outside of your home. Uneven flooring, thick carpets, rugs, pets and other trip hazards. Furniture and seating that is perhaps difficult to stand up from. Kitchen facilities that are hard to access. The size and positioning of furniture in your rooms creating an obstacle. Is everything you need within easy reach? Could it be relocated? In the next few slides, we will look at some common pieces of equipment, aids and home adaptations that an occupational therapist or physiotherapist may suggest as a means to help make your daily activities a little easier. 
Here are a few examples of some mobility equipment that can help you to move around and transport items within your home without having to carry them. If you do use a mobility aid, try and keep this close by. Using your mobility aid whenever you can, even for the shortest of distances, can help to conserve your energy, so your energy reserves are topped up for other things. Here are a few examples of some common home adaptations that can help make getting in and out of your home a little easier. Your occupational therapist will be able to advise you on what home adaptations may be available to you through your local council authority. Here are a few examples of some common equipment and aids that can make meal and drink preparation a little easier. Here are a few examples of some common equipment and aids to help with eating and drinking. There are also specialist pieces of eating and drinking equipment that can be assessed for people with more complex needs. Here are a few examples of some common equipment and aids to help with managing your home. Here are a few examples of some common equipment and aids that can help with medication management and other daily tasks. Most small aids and gadgets will need to be purchased by yourself, though we would always advise that you speak to an occupational therapist first for some advice. Some pieces of equipment and adaptations can be assessed and provided to you depending upon your individual need. For more information about equipment, aids and adaptations, please see our dedicated video, Equipment and You, which you'll be able to find in a link below this video on our website. Please keep a lookout for the self-care series, which will provide basic practical information and guidance in managing everyday tasks that some people with a life-limiting condition may experience difficulty with. Our aim is to help people improve their quality of life, overall well-being and independence. And we hope that the self-care series will benefit those who may not require specialist input just yet or who may be waiting for an assessment, either from ourselves or another organisation. We also have some bite-sized self-help resources which you can access in the toolkit section of our website. These include a goal-setting worksheet, fatigue management scale and diaries to record important details relating to your wellness. If you would like further information about any of the services available at St Catherine's Hospice, please visit our website at www.stcatherines.org.uk. If you feel that you or someone you care for is needing specialist advice, please contact us by telephone on 01723 351 421